If you missed any of the seminars here, just know that we're playing them on Nikon Live. You can play them back as many times as you want, NikonUSA.com Live. So we got actually back-to-back -back presentations coming up, two very special presentations. If you pass by the satellite over here on this side of our, our booth, you saw a gentleman working with tiny little drops of water making really incredible macro shots. His name is Joey Terrell, and he's going to actually come up and show you how he does that. Right after that, we have a Masters of Wildlife panel discussion with Melissa Gru, Keith Ludzinski, and Michelle Valberg that I'll be moderating. So we're going to jump right into a set change to that. So without wasting any more of his uh, great time, his amazing talent and art, his dedication to this business, I think this is the best title we have so far. Tiny Bubbles, Abstract Worlds, Inside a Drop of Water, Nikon Ambassador Joey Terrell. Thank you. Hi, everyone. How's everybody doing? You guys having fun? All right. So let's just get right into it. This, to me, is one of the most fun things you can do in photography, mainly because it's something that you can do all by yourself. It doesn't matter what the weather is. It doesn't matter what it's like outside. If the sun shines, it doesn't matter. You build these things from start to finish. They're insanely fun to do. I hope you all give them a try. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how it's done. So this kind of thing, these are just little, little droplets of water. How many of you drink coffee? How many drink juice? This is one of those things like you squeeze juice with. You know, you put an orange on and squeeze the juice out. So what's interesting about this kind of thing is you get all kinds of surprises. You just never know what you're going to get. It all starts with a good plan, though, a good subject. But I wanted to show you a couple of examples of what can happen when you play with drops of water. So I, most of my stuff comes out of the kitchen. This is a kitchen whisk. You see it in there? Anybody know what that is? It's a drawer liner. The little drawer liner you would put, you know, so your stuff doesn't slide around in the drawer. What's interesting about the way this works, if you think about water droplets, they're like little lenses. And they magnify whatever it is that they're seeing, seeing. And so you get all kinds of surprises. Like I say, geometric shapes, all sorts of things. Color plays a role in it. Depth plays a role in it. But everything at these high magnifications, every little movement makes a huge difference. You all recognize what that is? Trippy, right? This is bubble wrap. Just sort of rotate it out of focus a little bit, and you see all kinds of, you see light refracting and things like that. They're, like I say, it's all, for those of you that live on the East Coast, I live on the West Coast. On the East Coast, for me, like I love getting into the zone of this. And on the East Coast, you know, you guys have weather where you can't go out and be shooting. You, this you can do anywhere. You can do it in your living room, you can do it in your basement, wherever. And it's just so consuming. So let's get into the gear. You need a camera for sure. DSLR, mirrorless, whatever you work with. I'm using the Z7. Love it for this. It's fantastic for this. You need a good, sharp macro lens. It has to be a good, sharp macro lens. My preference, the 105 macro VR, love that lens. You can use others, and I use others, but the higher magnifications tend to work better for this. So one of the most important things is a nice, stable shooting platform. Now, I built this. All it is is plastic pipe. On the bottom there, you can see I can turn those. There's an example of it over there. I can turn them and level it. And it's really important that you have the glass surface level. Otherwise, only part of your photograph is going to be sharp. So in this case, what I've got is I've got the top stage, which is where the water drops go, and the middle stage, which is wherever the subject, whatever the subject's going to be, that's where it's going to sit, is on that second stage. Obviously, you need to have some water and clean glass. I can't stress the clean glass enough because I have a dog, he's a yellow lab, and his hair is everywhere, and I'll find I'll just lean over the camera and something will just fall off of me onto the glass. 
and you don't see it. My eyes aren't as great as they used to be, but at, at one to one, you see everything. And so you have to be real, otherwise you're going to spend a whole lot of time retouching. So very important to clean the glass. A nice sturdy tripod, very, very important. I can't mention the product name. It's a product that you would spray on your windshield so that the, the you guys know what I'm talking about. So you go to any automotive store and ask them for what I just said and they'll tell you what it is. So you, you spray it on the glass, wipe it, let it dry, wait about five minutes and then polish it off. And what that does is it makes the water bead. It'll make it, otherwise, if you try to do it without it, the water just sort of sags and it won't focus what's underneath it. Once you get the water to bead, it'll focus it, and then you'll be able to make nice pictures. I tend to only use the spray bottle sparingly. I only spray every now and again. I don't tend to use the spray bottle. Instead, I use hypodermic needles. It's much easier to take and actually place the drops where I want them. I, my hand isn't as steady as it used to be, so I often find myself accidentally pushing too hard and it sprays water everywhere and then I have to start all over. So you have to be very careful with the hypodermic needles. Get them in different gauges because they put out different size drops. But you can go to any, I didn't know this, but you can go to any pharmacy and buy hypodermic needles of a certain gauge. You can't buy the bad kind, you can buy the good kind and that's the kind you need. You need to make sure that everything is level. The back of the camera, meaning the, 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 where the sensor is, has to be parallel to the glass. Otherwise, you're only focused on one part of the frame. And then you need a good subject. This is a bath mat, or not a bath mat, but a mat that you would put in your sink, you know, so the dishes don't break. So, you know, you go to your local kitchen store and you buy something for five bucks and it makes for a really interesting, and I'll show you later what this looks like. I use the SB5000 speed lights. I tend to use them because they're radio controlled and I can control them from the Z7. So on the back of the camera, I'm able to get in there and actually change the exposure on the camera itself. So I position the lights and then I can look at the back of the camera and increase or decrease the exposure at will on the back of the camera. But you want to have a mechanism, some sort of a mechanism where you, because you need to be able to move that light around in a very precise way. If you can't make it precise, you can't put the light exactly where it needs to be. And when your frame is so small, the light has to go exactly where you need for it to be. Make sense? So here is where you would control it on the back of the camera. And I'm able to increase and decrease exposure up and down right on the back of the camera. Very, very handy, very easy to use. You also need a way to really control the light. In such a small space, you don't want light spilling all over the place. So for example, if you have water up here and you have a subject down here, you don't want the light that's hitting this hitting your water. Because otherwise you'll have all kinds of reflections in the water and it won't look good at all. So you have to be able to control your light very well. And for those of you who are a little bit intimidated by light, my suggestion is if ever you wanted to start to try to light things, this is the best possible way. There's no pressure. The subject isn't going anywhere. The, you know, like when you're trying to shoot people, you get kind of tense because, oh my gosh, I have to shoot really quickly. The water droplets won't go anywhere. So you can experiment, take your time, and have a lot of fun. And believe me, if you can do it on something this big, you can do it on something this big. It's a great way to learn light, truly. Color plays a role here for me because by using different colors, you're able to create depth. So by having different tonalities in the stack, if you will, it, it creates this spatial. Notice how in that first picture, the one of the juice squeezer, it felt kind of like outer space. The trick with these things is that you want the light, uh, the water drops to be as absolutely as crisp as possible. And then you want the background to be there, but not really there. And it's kind of a dance in terms of f-stop. Like I need to hold the focus of the water droplets, but I don't want to see the background too much. And color helps with that. 
because you can be a little more out of focus and, and use the color to give you more depth. Backgrounds are, are another key part. I just go to the local you know, craft store and I flip through all the little pieces of paper that they have the kids use in school for a dollar and I buy like 20 bucks worth of stuff and I bring it home and I just hang on to it and I say, I'm going to use this one of these days on something and sure enough, they come in handy. And you don't need a lot of it. Like this one, you'll see this in another picture. It's, I use just like a piece of it. You don't, you don't need big backgrounds. These backgrounds are only about that big. Everything is so small, so you have to start thinking small. So this is for the coffee lovers. This is a French press, the bottom of a French press. But what I was talking about a minute ago about the depth, I feel like if the background, meaning this part, if that's too sharp, you don't feel the depth of it. What makes this work is, is that it's out of focus enough to make the drops feel like they're in your face, but it's not so out of focus that it's just a wash of color. And this is a dance, but it's also the joy of doing it, truly. This is where the fun comes in because every decision that gets made in this is you. Every single thing that happens in these pictures is you. No one else is helping. And that's the best part of it. At the end of it, you feel like, you know, I made that. So, you do want to find things that are, you know, like have nice shapes and patterns and textures and things like that. Not everything works. I have tried several times to do a face and I can't make it work. Not a human face, but like some sort of a facial thing. Because I thought it would be really cool, even like for Halloween, to do like a ghoulish mask or something in, in a water droplet. But you have to think of the curvature of the water as something that is, um, it's doing the opposite of what you think it is. So like a face just doesn't work. The only thing that's sharp is the nose. So sometimes, you know, you, you think something will work well. And you'll learn as you try this, you'll see what works and what doesn't. So the key is you have to clean the glass. You have to experiment with spacing. This is, in, this is a process, step by step by step. So all those are, those are cupcake baking cups, flattened out, I soaked them in water and then I flattened them out so that they would lay flat. And you can see the setup here. Here's the platform. There's a, there's a piece of glass here, right, that's holding these. This is where the water droplets are. The camera, the Z7, is nice and stable. Here are the speed lights on either side. These lights are only lighting this. That's the idea. You don't want to light anything else. So when you think about the spacing, it's where's the camera? Where's the glass? Where's the subject? Where's the background? All those spaces matter in the final photograph. So you kind of have to experiment with what works and each subject will be slightly different. So you definitely want to make sure the camera is level. I use a bubble level. And like I say, to me, hypodermic needles are better than spraying because I can make the drops exactly the size that I want to make them and then move them around with the tip of the needle. They like, sort of like a water bug on the top of the water, right? With the needle, it'll just move if you push it around. And then if you join two together, they'll kind of like snap together kind of like magnets, right? And then you've got one that's too big. And then you stick it in the middle and you draw a little water out to make it the size you want. It's, you need a steady hand, but it's super fun. So you need to experiment with what aperture you want to use. Here are the baking cups. Now these are example pictures. These are not final pictures. You notice that like you can see what happens when you have like that's sharp, but that's not. That's how sh shallow the depth of field is. But watch what happens as you change f-stop. At some point you go, that's too, sh too much. I see too much of the background. I liked it better when it was floating. And that's an experiment. You have to play with it. So lens to glass, that's how big are the drops going to be. And you see what happens again, like parts of it stay in focus and parts of it go out. 
So there's a magic spot for every single subject that works the best and you have to play with it to see. So this is interesting. Notice the black part around here. What happens is the further the, the subject moves away from the water droplets, right, the smaller it becomes in the drop itself. So as I'm, I'm going to move this a little further away, watch how much bigger that black line gets. That's just by making, making it further away. You can counteract that by having a bigger subject. So it'll cover it. Remember, you're looking at a curved subject so you have to have more of it. It's like using a wide angle lens, right? If I say I want to fill the lens with the crowd, right? If I'm shooting with an 85, I only need 10 people. If I put on a, you know, a, a, a 20, right, I need more people. It's the same thing here, exactly the same. So now the background is the other part of it. So in this case, you've got a, you know, I've established this is the relationship that I want, but what I've done is I've added some color and it creates a different feel than just the black. Just by changing the exposure of the color, it changes the whole feel of the picture. Again, this is all on you. You can play with it all you want and have all the fun you want and say I like that better or I don't like that. So I like to work tethered to a computer. It just makes it easier at this kind of magnification. I can see every last detail and I tend to catch the dog hairs that have fallen into it easier than when I'm just doing it with the naked eye. This is a, um, a light bulb, like the corner of a light bulb with the filament. Definitely use a remote release, you know, any movement of the camera. If you're using the speed light, it'll mitigate that some, to some degree. The flash will help you with freezing the, any movement of the camera. But if you're using continuous light or sunlight or something like that, definitely a remote. Like I say, I like the flash. I prefer the flash. That freezes everything. And at these magnifications, you definitely need that. Play around. There is no one, someone was asking me earlier, like I do a lot of stuff at f45. I do a lot of stuff at 5.6. Sometimes I play with focus stacking in the D850. The D850, if you don't know, will focus stack in camera, meaning it will capture, it'll change the focus for you slowly but surely from, so I can like focus on the top of a water drop and then it will change the focus to the bottom of the water drop and it'll save that stack. So maybe it's 60 pictures and then I'll bring it into software and blend them together and it'll hold focus from the top of the drop to the bottom of the drop. It's a great way to play with your depth of field. So try different things, different needles, a spray bottle, all kinds of things, you get all kinds of different results. And like I say, you can move those drops, I mean it's, amazing. it's kind of fun. You know, you play around and like I say, you watch two of them kiss and then they join together and then you're like, oh, I gotta pull them apart. If you like the micro droplets, like little tiny drops that don't actually function as a lens, but they're kind of like, I don't know, ambiance to the picture, a gentle spray and let it just sort of settle in there, just so it's there for, for atmosphere, if you will. And then I think it's important to always have drops going out of the frame. There's a tendency to like frame them, you know, like where, where the, the water droplets end at the edge. I always think it's better if you just sort of let them bleed out of the frame, like you just sort of captured, you know, a, a selection of them. So there's the bath mat. It's trippy, right? You'd never think you, no, I keep saying bath mat, like a sink mat, little plastic sink mat and just color. So you definitely want to shield the glass so that the light's not, you know, getting into anything. Different colors, different moods, cools and warms, pastels, try all kinds of different things. And translucent things are really fun, like that mat. Things where light passes through it as well as through the openings, totally fun. So in this case, I've got white stars underneath the stars and stripes, and I lit the stars really bright to pass through 
the stars and stripes. So you see the stars, they're passing through two different layers of things. That's what I mean, there's all kinds of surprises in this. Play with things. Tones and colors, like I said, create depth. Try different combinations. I'm telling you, one of the things about this is, is the little step by step by step by step where you're like, that looks great. And then it's like, that looks better. And then the next thing you know, you've got something you really love, keep going. 10 minutes later, you'll have something you'll absolutely adore. It's, it's the most fun about this. You find all kinds of surprises. And then consider the focus, like I said. Think about how um, the depth of focus is affecting the final image. There's, you saw the setup for this. This is like all the cupcake things. So for me, this is an opportunity uh, for those, like I said, for those of you who have ever done darkroom work and you got into that place where the lights are dim and you're kind of in your own head and maybe you got a little music going on in the background and you go nowhere to go because you're in the dark and you're stuck there you know, processing, all of us miss that kind of because it was, it was fun, it was peaceful. This is, for me, this is very similar to that. So I encourage all of you, go out and give this a try. It's very, very calming and you'll be amazed at how quickly time passes, but also how you feel after you've created something like this. Like I say, you lose yourself in it. You lose yourself in the creativity. It's super fun. You have to experiment. You have to. You cannot go out and feel like, I have to hit a home run on the first try. You'll find very quickly what works and what doesn't and why. And so your success rate will go up very quickly. You'll, have, you'll try it the first time and you go, the camera's too far away. The subject's too far away from the water drops. You have to play and you'll see what works and what doesn't and you'll discover, you know, like once you understand what works, then you can leap from there and say, well, how about if I did this? Someone was asking me earlier, I did a picture with some um, drinking straws, like a bunch of drinking straws. And I thought, well, what, what would happen if I took the drinking straws and put them in a bowl? Because the water is curved, so what you want underneath it, if it's also curved, maybe you can hold focus over the entire thing. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Like I say, the image is yours from start to finish. It's one of the best parts of this. I love landscape photography and the people who are coming up next, some of them are friends, I admire them all. But I personally, I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible, terrible, terrible because I don't have the patience to go out and stand there and wait for things to be right. In this case, I can create right. I can make right. So. Give it a go. When you can't go out and the sun's not shining and you don't have a landscape in front of you, this is, for me, this is my landscape. So, thank you very much. Any, I got a couple minutes. Any questions at all? Do you use glass because glass can have a blue-green tint or do you use a clear acrylic or? It's an excellent question. I, I use the thinnest glass I can use and I go to a, a glass specialist to tell them I want the clearest glass you have, whatever that is, but I want it thin. So I'm not shooting, yeah, it's an excellent question. You don't want to use like a table, you know, where the glass is this thick and it's got that green tint to it. I don't think that would work well at all. I just bought some, you know, really thin glass. Anybody else? Uh, due, to the temp uh, due to the curvature of the droplets, do you ever have issues with other things coming into the frame? I, I, it's a good question. I shoot in a dark, like I hung dra uh, black drapery all around, and I'm only lighting what the subject is. You have to be careful if there's anything in the set that's around it, and you light it, you'll see it. Because it's a great question because very much like a lens, things kind of come in from the corners. It's the same thing. If you're not careful, you have to make sure everything's clear, for sure. How far apart are the two uh, glass plates? It depends. Every subject's a little different. The narrowest I ever am is about, about maybe about four inches. But I've been that far. It's somewhere in that range. 
tends to work. at one to one? Most of them are very close to one to one, yeah. And I haven't tried more than one to one, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? We good? Thank you all very much. Appreciate you being here.